In this first of a two-part tutorial, we'll take you through the basics that make up a typical subtractive filter. We will be using Cherry Audio's Voltage Modular Nucleus. It doesn't give us a lot of choices when it comes to filters. There's only one in the collection. However, it has all the features one might need for most uses. Go ahead and fire up Nucleus, and then click that New button in the upper left to clear your rack. To better understand what you hear and see, you can build a simple synthesizer patch. We'll start by going to the module library on the left and scrolling down to the oscillator module. Add it to the rack. We'll scroll up to the filter and add that one too. Don't patch them together just yet. We'll get to that soon enough. Next, scroll up in the library until you see the amplifier. There are still two more modules to bring in. The first is an oscilloscope. This will allow you to see the signal as you experiment with the filter. Finally, bring in an envelope generator and drag it over to the left of the amplifier. This will allow us to trigger sounds. It's time to begin patching. First, patch the amplifier's positive output to the oscilloscope's input A jack. Now, run a second cable from the amplifier's positive output to the 1LM jack in the main outs panel up at the top. Go to the CV sources panel and run a cable from the gate down to the envelope generator's gate in jack. We can now trigger the envelope with MIDI. Patch the envelope's positive output to the amplifier's CV amount. Patch the CV source's pitch to the oscillator's pitch CV jack. Each of our oscillator's outputs produces a different waveform, and all but the two on the left have different harmonics. Run a cable from the bottom left output to the filter's audio in jack. Next, run a cable from the filter's low-pass output to the amplifier's input. Go ahead and trigger a note. You will hear the oscillator's ramp waveform. You'll also see its shape depicted in the oscilloscope's display. Currently, the filter is not affecting it in any way. Find the filter's cutoff knob, play and hold a note, and turn that knob anti-clockwise. Looking at the oscilloscope, we can see that it slowly loses its shape until it becomes a sine wave and then silence. When using the low pass output, reducing the cutoff reduces the high frequencies, allowing low frequencies to pass through. If, however, we use the high-pass output, we find that the reverse is true. It allows the high frequencies to pass through, filtering out the lows. Finally, the bandpass output filters out anything lower or higher than the cutoff's currently dialed in frequency. Let's go back to the low pass output. Set the cutoff to around 400 Hz. Play and hold a note while paying attention to the sound and the shape in the oscilloscope. Switch the filter's slope 
from the 24 dB position over to the 12 dB position. This slope determines how aggressively the filter works on the harmonics immediately surrounding the selected cutoff frequency. Let's go back to the 24 dB slope. Now set the cutoff to around halfway. Locate the filter's resonance knob. Play and hold a note while examining the waveform as you gradually increase the resonance knob until it's set fully clockwise. Resonance, which is also called Q or emphasis, boosts the level of the currently selected cutoff frequency. Let's perform an experiment. We'll turn the resonance all the way back down and the cutoff fully up. Let's switch the oscillator's output to the sine wave. Playing a note, turn the cutoff knob slowly anti-clockwise. It doesn't actually do a lot. That's because it has nothing to grab hold of. Sine waves have no harmonics, only the fundamental frequency. Therefore, there's nothing to subtract. Continue experimenting with the filter. In next month's installment, we will take a closer look at how it might be used to create interesting patches.